Hey everybody, wanted to talk about some changes coming to DLSS, starting with 5.1. Unreal Engine has uh, changed enough from uh, you know, 5.0, and so uh, the new version of DLSS with 5.1 is going to require a, a few different details uh, you know, in the editor and how you script with it in Blueprint code in order to get the most out of it. So first thing I want to note is something that uh, you'll notice right away has changed about it. When you load up the editor and you have DLSS, your DLSS plugin active, um, if you go here to the, the the hamburger in the upper left corner, uh, you'll notice that there's there's no DLSS menu anymore. And that's because we're following standards set uh, uh, by Epic on this topic. Basically, upscalers have become uh, uh, you know very standard now in the industry. Everybody is doing some form of upscaling, sometimes two or three versions of upscaling. And uh, DLSS needs to play in that field. And so uh, having a, a custom DLSS menu here in directly in the menu uh, for, based off of a plugin uh, essentially no longer fits their guidelines. So um, how you interface with it is a little bit different. Uh, of course, you know, if I need to enable DLSS, I can use the console. I can... Uh, uh, that command is rngx uh, dlss to access all of the, the dlss commands and I could do an enable one and I could do that right from there if I wanted to but maybe a, a more user-friendly way um, and uh, not so obvious so I'm going to point it out is if once you've got the plugin set up uh, you can go to your settings project settings and um, down under plugins you'll see an nvidia dlss entry and right from here i can enable it in in the in the viewport i have separate controls for enabling it in the viewport or doing during a play and editor uh, right so i can i can turn those on and off uh, as needed so i can i can take this menu and i could dock it like right say up there along with my other uh, detail panes Right, and if I'm doing some uh, some technical artwork with it, or if I'm trying to debug a scene uh, and I want to just quickly cycle back and forth, if I'm not interested in typing the console command, um, I can just use this menu item right here to turn it on and off in the viewport and uh, debug whatever um, you know visual issues I might be dealing with, or maybe just for comparative purposes, I want to take a look at DLSS versus. Um, other methods and uh, check to make sure everything is working right. Now setting the viewport resolution for DLSS while you're in the editor is going to be done the same way as with any other upscaler, whether it's TSR or something else. Um, you're going to do it just from the hamburger menu and using the screen percentage control. So uh, you know you can see right now I'm in 66% uh, mode. But I, you know, I could I could put this down to 50% or the equivalent of uh, performance mode, and you can see what that does to the scene. There's always like a bit of a refresh time, right? Switching between the different percentages. Um, but you know, 66, 67, you know, is roughly for quality mode. Uh, you know, 58 is for uh, balanced mode. Um, and so you can see what what each one looks like uh, uh, directly in the editor. Keep in mind, of course, uh, very unless you have a very high resolution monitor, if you're looking at DLSS in the viewport, you're probably looking at it less than the resolution than you would in the actual game. And so uh, uh, the, the amount of input pixels going on here, especially if you're in something like a performance mode, uh, say like 50%, where Unreal often defaults, maybe like 55% or something, uh, it may not be enough pixels for for uh, the viewport to give you an accurate representation of what DLSS will look like in game. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's, it might be a good idea to, you know, if you're uh, debugging a, an issue, just uh, press F11 and go full screen. And that gives you maybe more accurate representation of, of uh, what to expect uh, in engine or what an end user would expect. Um, I would just ask to, uh, for you to bear that in mind. One other detail on this, DLSS and DLAA no longer 
have uh, separate blueprint functions like they did in the past. Uh, DLAA is short for Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing, and it's essentially the same thing as DLSS, but rendered at 100% or full resolution, right? So the idea is that um, you're not saving any performance by using DLAA, but it's a very high quality option. In fact, we think it's the highest quality option. So, and you can represent that with when DLSS is active. There's no separate DLAA plugin, for example. And you'll notice in the uh, in all the the language now, we we basically refer to DLSS and DLAA, uh, you know, with like a slash. Like it's basically the same thing. The only thing that separates them is whether or not you're running in a hundred percent full resolution. So you could uh, very easily represent DLAA in the viewport just by setting your screen percentage to 100%. That, that might make it a little bit easier for you to take advantage of deep learning anti-aliasing as a mode for, for everybody to use. Uh, if you're migrating to 5.1 from any previous Unreal, I just highly recommend that you read the our readme.md documentation. Uh, there's some very important tidbits in here, especially transitioning from earlier Unreals. Um, we try to make this as seamless as possible uh, given the changes, uh, but um, if, you, if you just comb, comb over this documentation, I think it'll, it'll really help with probably most any question you might, you might ask. Uh, now, one thing I will note here, um, I don't want to go through every issue. I think, I think uh, in general, um, uh, DLSS is largely the same and it's very well documented. But if you uh, scroll to the bottom of, of this document, you'll see a section on upgrading DLSS from earlier versions of Unreal. Now, the key takeaway here, uh, besides how it operates differently, is um, uh, the old blueprint functions uh, that were present in uh, previous versions of DLSS are deprecated. Another key bit here though is that uh, even though the old functions are deprecated um, they'll still work uh, so very technically if you're upgrading from say 5.0 to 5.1 and you've already got an active project and you've written all your scripts the way you like extremely technically there's no need for you to change any of your blueprint scripting uh, around how dlss works um, i can show you what that looks like in editor You'll notice things like this. Uh, just this is the the UI script for this particular project, and here you'll recognize the old CL, uh, set DLSS mode function. Um, and I've got a couple of warnings. Um, uh, uh, the the project will compile. It'll work. It'll everything will function with the old scripts. Um, uh, uh, of course, if you want a warning free project and you want to do this correctly, we recommend that you um, update your scripting. Um, you won't be able to create or even copy new versions of, you know, the old script functions here. Uh, uh, if you do any new scripting with DLSS, you'll, you'll need to use the new functions. So the documentation is very good as a reference for this. Uh, what you'll notice here is that um, we have a, a new thing called uh, get DLSS mode information. Uh, and we're doing this instead, instead of the previous set DLSS mode, essentially. So it's, re it's really kind of two parts. Um, uh, at, at a basic level, there's the, oh, let's look at the, at the available options here. If I go, if I just type DLSS and I can enable DLSS, right? But there's no um, drop down from here to set the mode. Uh, and then uh, the other one, is this uh, get DLSS mode information uh, function. So if I go to the DLSS menu and here's the get, right? Um, and then uh, from here, uh, this, like I said, this might look a little more complicated, but it actually uh, gives you um, better scripting functionality overall, sort of uh, safer and more robust scripting uh, and more control. So from here, uh, you'll notice that like like before, we have the uh, uh, the previous DLSS modes, including um, you know uh, the auto mode can be chosen uh, and the different quality modes. One other note, very quickly here, um, uh, DLSS sharpening. Uh, we, we of course we recommend every developer include a sharpening slider 
uh, when they're implementing DLSS. Uh, but the DLSS sharpening function itself uh, is deprecated. It's been replaced by the NIS sharpening function. Now, NIS uh, is short for the NVIDIA Image Scaler, and it's a, a cross-platform uh, compatible way of, of doing upscaling, basically for non-RTX cards. So um, it's, it comes with the DLSS plugin, and I can show you that uh, just real quickly here. Uh, if I go to plugins, um, and then I search for NVIDIA, I get all of the available um, NVIDIA plugins that um, you know might be included with with my branch of Unreal or uh, you know in, in in this case I'm looking at NVRTX so I've got a, a couple of extra ones but um, you'll see that the there's the NVIDIA image scaling uh, plugin is available and we recommend that you uh, turn on this plugin uh, when using DLSS because uh, this has a, a, a built-in sharpening technique which is superior to the previous one in DLSS and is the new way we recommend you you do sharpening uh, from an interface standpoint obviously you know you, you just you just label that as as DLSS sharpening um, and end users will be able to set that that value uh, uh, but behind the scenes they'll be using NIS for sharpening um, and this also gives you since you're including NIS this gives you a uh, cross-platform sort of a, a lower-end hardware method of doing upscaling um, uh, for your end users if you want uh, so it gives you a, another option um, uh, you know maybe to fall back on uh, if if they don't have RTX hardware uh, the, so they don't have DLSS available you can have that uh, automatically fall back to NIS and just keep the same sharpness slider in fact very quickly I can show you um, in your uh, blueprint scripting what that looks like uh, you can just search for NIS and get the various uh, NVIDIA image scaler functions and you'll see that there's a uh, set NIS sharpness and uh, from there you just you set a sharpness value much like how you did before with DLSS just using um, I guess you could say a, a better algorithm um, for that okay thank you for watching this video today I really want to encourage everybody to uh, read the updated documentation and of course ask questions. So thank you again for watching this video and have a great day.